Yo, 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 we are again in the middle of Chicago for no other reason than having a dope location to shoot this intro sequence and tell you that we're gonna talk about the Fujinon MK 18 to 55 and the 50 to 135 in this video today. Before we jump into the depth of it, let's drop a little sequence that I entirely shot on these lenses and then we see each other just in a second. Drop it. What's up guys, my name is Alex. I'm a photographer and a filmmaker based in Chicago, for now. And that's it. The most important thing to me isn't necessarily the, the rules, like the technicalities behind the image, like you, know, you have your standard like, rule of thirds and stuff. It's more telling a story within the context of the scene that you're trying to create. When I'm shooting, I like to like place a subject and, and give a sense of scale which gives you that context that you're kind of like this small figure within a, a bigger picture type of environment. Intuition is something, especially when it comes to photography or cinematography, is something that is developed. I think of like the 10,000 hour rule. Photography and filmmaking has definitely changed my perception of, of the world in a huge way. I came from a background where I was pretty strictly a uh, you know, a corporate kind of finance person. Human beings, in a sense, aren't really confined to those like restraints that a lot of us are kind of bombarded by every day. It really showed me that the world is made up of all, all of these really unique cultures and, and, and people that really aren't so different from each other when it comes down to like, you know, our basic like natural instincts. All right, I hope you enjoyed this little sequence and it gave you a first idea of what these lenses look like. In full disclosure, Fujinon sent me the 18 to 55 as a review unit and the 50 to 135 as a loner so I can test out the full set. But I'm not beholden to anything. I can say whatever I want and will give you my honest opinion as always. So let's talk specs and optics. <laughs> The first time I laid my eyes on these lenses was when I actually got my Komodo a couple of months back and I got the 50 to 135 as a loner. And what immediately surprised me was its size and its weight particularly. On the picture you would think that these are massive and heavy lenses, but once you have them in your hand, you realize that they are actually delightfully light and compact. If you're looking into the Fujinon MKs, you're possibly also looking at the DZO Picto zooms as they are in a similar focal and price range. Though if size and weight play any role in your style of production, the MK certainly beat them all day, every day, no doubt. Each of these lenses comes in at just over two pounds, which is just under one kilo. I was even able to make this lens in combination with the Komodo work on a one-hand gimbal like the RS2, which is insane for a Cena zoom lens, which cool stuff. Both lenses are a T2.9 across the full zoom range, which is about an f2.75 and fairly fast for a Cena zoom. Do I wish they would be faster, like a T2.1 or so? Duh, yeah, but I guess in this kind of body you would push the limits of physics to get there. The lenses are coming fully geared, as you would expect from a Cena style lens, and measure the same dimensions and therefore may have the gearing also at the same position, making swapping lenses with a matte box and a follow focus super fast and easy. The focus barrel rotation is 200 degrees and the markings are both in feet and in the much better metric system, which I personally highly appreciate because I still don't have an intuitive grab on feet and inches. I mean, why is there an imperial system? It doesn't make sense. Heck, even my left foot is smaller than my right foot. Anyhow, I got the RF version of this lens, which is modded by Duclos lenses, and it made the adapter that I had to use for my EF lenses on the Red Komodo completely obsolete. Thanks to the variable flange distance of this lens, you can also get it with a Sony E or MFT mount, but more on this in a second. Now let's switch gears and talk about the optical aspects of this set. And as always, we're not gonna do it scientifically, but in the real world. The biggest optical feature for me, aside from the actual look of these lenses, is that these are parfocal. I explained it before, but parfocal basically means when you zoom in or out with your lens, your focus tracks and stays on point with your subject that you're focused on. 
This is not the case for this photo zoom lenses you might be using and certainly a game changer when you switch over to actual cinema glass. What you have to do though with these par focal lenses is something that is commonly called back focusing or like the pros call it flange focus adjustment. This is to achieve the precise distance between your camera sensor and the optical elements of your lens in order for the lens to work as designed. Now you may freak out with your hair on fire because back focusing is oftentimes associated with a tedious and time consuming process called shimming where you add these little metal or plastic rings called shims to the back of your lens where the lens mount is in order to hit the right optimal flange distance to your sensor for that given lens. While many zoom lenses, especially vintage glass, needs shimming, all Fujinon lenses come actually with a very neat built-in solution which is a back focus ring. This back focus ring mechanism not only makes this lens extremely versatile and allows it to work on various mounting systems with different flange distances like Sony E or MFT mount lenses, but it also makes the back focus calibration, which you want to do when you first time get the lens, but also when you have extreme temperature swings, very easy and super fast. I will drop a link in the description below to a video that explains step by step, super easy, how to do back focusing on these kind of lenses. Up next, let's talk about focus breathing, meaning is there any noticeable change in size of the image as you rack focus from close up to infinity? And as you can see, this lens focus breathing is absolutely at a minimum as you would expect from a modern Cine lens. Distortion on this set of lenses is in a real world scenario not noticeable even if you go full wide. I'm sure if you film a charge you will see some distortion, but again, who shoots in a lab? The flaring, especially when shooting directly into a backlit subject, is actually very minimal, so they did a great job with that. This said, I actually appreciate some vintage flares, giving lenses some charm. So if you're looking for a vintage look, the flares on these lenses might be too modern for you. This said though, I have to say that the bokeh on these lenses is really, really pretty. It curves nicely towards the outer areas of the frame, reminding me a little bit actually of some vintage lenses like the Helios 44-2M. I think. I did not personally notice any chromatic aberration standing out, so very nice. The close distance on the 18 to 55 is 2 feet and 10 inches, and on the 50 to 135 it is 4 feet, which is not super close, but both lenses are equipped with a macro function. This allows you to get much closer and get some really nice tight shots if needed. But keep in mind, in the macro mode you lose actually the par focality function feature of these lenses. So these lenses came out in 2017 with a lot of buzz, in part because of its comparatively low price of $3,800 and $4,000 US. Obviously this is not an everyday purchase and if you are considering buying one of those lenses or both, definitely rent them out and take them for a spin yourself because I don't want to carry that burden that you make a purchase decision based on this video. In the grand scheme of things in the world of Cine zooms, but also in context of Fujinon's Cabrio lenses, which come in at start at $10,000 and go all the way up to $40,000, the MKs are actually coming in at a comparatively competitive price tag. These lenses are more expensive than my camera buddy, but overall lenses are, I would say, a better investment in the future because camera bodies update every two to three years, right? While lenses stick around. That's why we have vintage lenses. All right, fellas, in conclusion, in summary, I dig these lenses. The optical qualities are great and it comes with all the belts and whistles or the lack thereof that you would expect from a Cine zoom lens. Though what stands out to me most is its comparatively compact size and light weight for a Cine zoom. So who's this lens made for? I would say yes, for filmmakers who are traveling a lot and want to keep it compact and small, their setup. If you're trying to keep a low profile though, these lenses are still long, so you can't really go covert with those and shoot out of your pocket. But again, if weight and size is important to you because you travel a lot or you want to fly these lenses on a gimbal, I think it's worth the extra dime compared, for example, to the DZO Picta zooms. Now let us know down in the comment section below if you have any questions around these lenses or thoughts. I'm trying to reply to everyone, even if it's just saying hi or thanks. 
If you have also any thoughts of what lens I should try next, let us know down in the comments below as well. And if you want to learn more about Cine lenses and or see the review of the Tokina 11 to 20, check out the video up here. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a good morning, have a good night, whenever and wherever you are around this beautiful planet. Bye bye. Woo! Nice! Yeah! What's up, guys? My name is Alex Chien. That doesn't sound, that doesn't feel right. 55 and the 55, no, the 50 to 135. I have that one down. My outro is always on point. That works fine.